Talk to us about how this lunar rover proposal is different from the Apollo moon cars and how this all will work. Yeah, so um, thank you for having me today, Emily. Really excited to be here. Um, so the Artemis program is a program that's going to take humans back to the surface of the moon. And what's different than the Apollo days is that we're going there to, to stay. We want to have a sustained um, presence on the moon and be able to use the moon as a leaping off point to go even further into our solar system with humans, to really expand our understanding of the solar system and the science, which will really help us here back on Earth to understand what's happening on our planet. And so one of the things that, as you mentioned, is we just last week announced our partnership with General Motors to build a mobility platform for NASA and for others that want to explore on the um, lunar surface. And we're really excited about that partnership. So the space race is heating up among private companies. What makes you think that Lockheed Martin has an edge to win this lunar rover NASA contract? Yeah, so we're really excited about the partnership with General Motors because it's really taking um, a two different industries and bringing the best of both of those industries together. This non-aerospace industry partnership is something that I think you're going to see more and more of as we move forward into the future. Because if we're going to have a sustained presence on the moon or other planets like Mars, it's going to take uh, industries beyond aerospace to make that happen. And so this partnership and what I think is unique about it is taking uh, the 50 plus years that Lockheed Martin has in building exploration spacecraft that have explored every planet in our solar system with the expertise and innovation and technologies that General Motors is investing in, in battery technology, as well as autonomy, and bringing the best of both of those uh, companies together to build this mobility platform. Uh, again, for um, NASA, for the Artemis program, as well as others in commercial industry. Um Biden's uh, funding for NASA definitely gives commercial space a boost. What should investors be most excited about? Well, I think um, one thing I'm excited about is the continuity of the Artemis program moving forward. Uh, the Biden administration has been in complete support for that program, and I think that's exciting. Uh, also, there's a slight increase in the budget for NASA, and we're seeing um, a complete increase in the amount of investment that's coming into the space um, domain in general, um, with investments um, last year in the billions of dollars that have coming into the into this industry. And so um, it's not just the U.S. government dollars, but investment dollars that are making um, space a really exciting time to be a part of it. And I think that's why you see um, all the excitement around space and, and what the possibilities are um, for the government as well as commercial um, economy on, on the moon and other places. So let's talk a little bit more about the Artemis project, because NASA's Artemis project is planning to send astronauts back to the moon. Lockheed's Orion space capsule is an integral part of that. Give us an update on the space capsule and when we might see something like this happen. Yeah, absolutely. So the Orion spacecraft for what they call Artemis One was handed over to NASA at the beginning of the year in January. And it, she has been um, going through her launch processing um, with the ground system right now. She's completely fueled and uh, we are ready to start to put the launch abort system on top of that. The launch abort system will go over top of the crew module and it is in place as the lessons learned from previous shuttle missions um, and the uh, Challenger disaster. So the launch abort system is on the spacecraft for safety reasons to be able to take the astronauts and the entire crew module away from the rocket on the pad as well as during the ascent phase should there be an anomaly during that time frame. And then it would eject the crew module so it could safely land in the ocean to keep the crew safe. So once she gets the launch abort system stacked on top of the Orion crew module, we'll then bring um, the Orion, the, the full capsule with the launch abort system to the vertical assembly building where they will put the Orion um, capsule on top of the space launch system, which is the most powerful rocket that's ever been built. And the space launch system will then carry Orion um, out towards the moon. Um, we're really excited about this. It looks like we're going to be launching later this year in the November-December timeframe um, for the first mission of the launch uh, of, of the SLS system with Orion. Um, and then that Exciting. mission will be, a, yeah, that will be about a month-long mission where we will 
go around the moon. Um, the spacecraft, which is designed for deep space to go further than ever before, will go further than ever any spacecraft, human rated spacecraft, has gone. Um, and it's about 30 days worth of um, just putting her through her paces to test out all the systems that are on board, and then she'll come back uh, to Earth safely. And then just a, um, shortly after that, we'll be ready to start to fly crew. So that's an uncrewed mission for the first Artemis mission. Incredible. You know, we opened the show with yet another massive cyber attack, uh, one happening after another. Uh, our, our guest said that hackers don't care who the target is or how much um, havoc they wreak. They just want to make money. How are you thinking about space-related cyber attacks, given that the stakes in space are incredibly high? Yeah, no, that's a really great point. I think at, at Lockheed Martin, we um, we believe we have one of the best cybersecurity infrastructures in place, and that's no different for our operational systems as well. And we take cybersecurity extremely um, seriously, so that we can uh, we can be careful and making sure that our spacecraft and the astronauts that are riding on board our spacecraft are safe. So. Tell us then a little bit more uh, about what's in Lockheed's pipeline. The next one to three years, these missions are incredibly important. What else should we be watching for? Yeah, so, um, you know, we just announced a partnership with GM for the mobility piece of that. We think that mobility is a critical element to the Artemis programs because when the astronauts arrive on the surface of the moon, and we're really excited that we're going to see that first woman and the next person of, and the person of color land on the moon here in the next, you know, in this decade. Um, but once they get to the surface of the moon, um, they can only explore around their spacecraft. And one of the things that I think is um, interesting for viewers to know is that when you want to land something on the moon, you want it to be as flat as possible. Um, and where people want to explore and get great science is in the area that's really rocky and a rougher terrain. And so for the astronauts to get to that area where we can get the science that we're looking for, they need a platform that can give them that mobility to get to those areas um, of okay. the lunar surface. And so that's a big piece of it. The other piece I would mention is as we're looking to stay on the surface, there's infrastructure that needs to be there. So I think you'll see um, investments in areas where we might look at how do we leverage the lunar infrastructure. Uh, you know, there's frozen ice on the surface of the moon. Could we use okay. that ice, that water, to turn it into rocket fuel or into oxygen? There's a lot of science that still needs to go on to understand the composition of that ice on the surface and how it could be used and what contaminants are on there.